former chairman of the National Democratic Congress, Dr. Obed Yawa Samoa, has called for sanctions for citizen vigilante Martin Amido, but says he may not be the only person who deserves to be sanctioned. This follows what many describe as consistent attacks on personalities within the party and uh, the party itself. The cracks within the party seem to have deepened further with an article written by former Deputy Chief of Staff Dr. Valerie Sawyer partly questioning the integrity and loyalty of founder of the NDC, former President Rawlings, uh, Mr. Martin Yamidu. In an exclusive interview with Joy News, Mefa Apau, Dr. Samoa said he congratulated Dr. Sawyer for her article and proposed sanctions be imposed on citizen vigilante Martin Yamidu. Mefa first asked Dr. Samoa whether the NDC is divided. Well, these kind of things happen when uh, you have suffered the kind of defeat that we suffered, you know, and then there is a scramble for control of the party or for leadership. <coughs> you're, you're bound to get uh, these divisions, but they can be managed. How so? Well, the party has machinery for dealing with this, and Kosibuchi report has suggested means by which, uh, you know, these differences can be dealt with. Well, you, well, if there is goodwill on the part of everybody, I think the the divisions can be, uh, you know, uh, papered over. That is the goodwill there. Well, it is just the beginning. At the end, when they, they are faced with the prospect of fighting an election, I think the people will be more reasonable because, you know, you can't do it alone. You need, you need people to help you succeed. So I believe that uh, every effort will be made to patch things up. Should John Mahama be made to lead the NDC once more in 2020? Uh, the decision is for him to make, and uh, it's for the party to decide who to whom to take. But I can't tell you. With your wealth of experience and knowing uh, the ins and outs of the NDC, with this massive defeat that he suffered, do you think he will be the right man for the party? It is for the party to decide. Well, let's talk about the man, Jerry John Rawlings, uh, the person <coughs> people describe as the founder of the NDC. You worked for him uh, for a long time. You were the longest serving uh, attorney general and also the longest serving foreign affairs minister under him. You served under Chairman Rawlings. How difficult was it working with him or how, e how easy was it working for the man, Jerry John Rawlings? Well, I must say that as far as I was concerned, I didn't have difficulty working with him. We, we, we had pretty good uh, relations. Our dif difficulties are uh, um, in relation to the party, not in relation to government. Uh, I, I didn't find it difficult for uh, I mean working with him because in many ways we shared the same ideals and we are both forthright people, so we got on pretty well. So at the party level, what was the difficulty? The problem arose when uh, he tried to impose President Mills on the party. That's when I felt that other people were also entitled to be considered. And that is when we had our clashes and differences and of course they, they, you know a lot about it. Yeah. So were you then surprised when uh, Mills was in power and then we had uh, Mr. Rawlings dealing with him the way he did? Yes, I, <laughs> I was, but uh, you know, in many ways, it was quite obvious to me that he wanted uh, Professor Mills because he thought he could control him, you know. Uh, but when Professor Mills uh, um, uh, got the, the leadership he, he, and, and, and then won power, he played an independent role. And I think that didn't sit well with him. And that is why they, they kind of started, uh, you know, attacking him. And you didn't stay there. It looks like it wasn't just Mr. Mills that, um, uh, Professor Mills, that Mr. Rawlings criticized. Post Rawlings, no other president has been good enough. You are either corrupt, you are not leading the nation properly. Were you surprised at the way Mr. Rawlings just deals with every president apart from his administration? Well, it's not surprising. I mean, and it's not just a question of presidents. He deals with everybody that way. Everybody else is, uh, <coughs> is a crook. He is the only uh, saint. That, that is his attitude. You know. and, uh, 
well, that, that, what, what can we do about that? Is Mr. Rawlings a saint? No, so no, no human being is a saint, you know. Everybody has his uh, difficulties here and there. But I must say that, by and large, he's, uh, he's uh, well above the average in terms of uh, honesty and integrity. At least, you know, he tries to far more than some of the others. So he was never corrupt. Mr. Rawlings is infallible. Is that what we are saying? I'm not saying that. Uh, but it, I'm talking in relation to what I know of him. You know, that uh, uh, he believed in the, what you were saying you know, about uh, integrity and uh, honesty and accountability and that kind of thing. I believe he seriously believed in them and actually did try to promote them. You know, and in that respect, he probably has done better than uh, the, the other presidents. So then he's in good standing to criticize those that he criticizes. One can, one, one, everybody's in good standing to criticize. That has always been my philosophy, that anybody should have the freedom to speak his mind. And, uh, you know, people shouldn't just worship people just because they happen to be Mr. A or Mr. B. I mean, I really hate uh, hero worship, you know, particularly when it, it, it goes to the extent of ignoring the, the, uh, the faults of, of the person and the mistakes of the person. You know, and then that, I, I can't stand that. Mm. Then you won't be surprised um, about the latest article written by Dr. Valerie Sawyer, his father, I'm sure, her father I'm sure you served with, and uh, Chairman Rawlings. You read her article, what was your reaction? Well, in fact, uh, I, I congratulated her. I, I sent a text message congratulating her was speaking out of her mind. I think it's very good for the party and good for the country. Really? Yes. People should speak out their minds. They shouldn't be intimidated by anybody or terrorized by anybody. You know, she's spoken for her mind and she's entitled to do so. This is the founder of the NDC. This is Jerry John Rawlings, somebody that nobody in the party has been able to deal with frontally in the way that Valerie Sawyer did and you congratulate her? Uh, I, de I dealt with uh, Jerry Rawlings frontally too, you know, so <laughs> we are in the same boat. But I'm sure you read critically some of the things that uh, Dr. Valerie Sawyer said to Mr. Rawlings, buzzing like an agitated mosquito. Uh, she do he doesn't boom. He thinks that Mr. Rawlings believes he's the only saint, the junior Jesus amongst several others, an article interspersed with sarcasm, and some have described as an insult. And in our Ghanaian culture, they say, you can't insult an elder, especially your founding father. Well, maybe the language may be kind of flowery in, in, in places, but uh, the point she's making is that he's attacking everybody, you know, and, and he, he falls out with everybody, even including people who have worked closely with him. <coughs> and that's what she's, what she's uh, uh, criticizing. And I think she's, she's got a point there, you know. Mm. So for you, the basis or the main issues that she raises are valid? Yeah, they, 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 to some extent they are valid. It may, they, maybe the language in some places may be a little uh, flowery, but uh, I, she's, she's made very valid points. But they say it will further deepen the division uh, within the NDC, considering that she might be uh, in the Mahama faction and all that. People must be used to criticism. That is the whole thing, you see. The, wh why should the party be, the division be uh, 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 wider or deepened just because somebody has spoken the, her mind? I really don't understand that. People should be tolerant. We should begin to, to accept the right of people to express their opinions freely. So I, I really don't see that uh, what she has said is going to make matters worse than they are already. What we have to do is all of us to develop uh, a good spirit uh, of uh, cooperation and, uh, and, and, and harmony, and then uh, the party goes on. Well, but do you think that it has become unbecoming of uh, Mr. Rowling? Some have said that is the case of the, the Ghanaian proverb that people say that uh, when the frog has had it, uh, tie up on Shania or Jiwo, more like if the frog had had enough water, it, it throws up. 
So it looks like they've just had it uh, with Mr. Rawlings. Could that be also the key? Well, I should think a lot of people <coughs> are not happy about the consistent manner in which he has been criticizing uh, elements within the party. And, uh, you know, when uh, even when you have a good case, but it takes a form of a kind of a, a, a holier than thou attitude or a form, a form of a, a persecution or vendetta, then, you know, people begin to, to turn off the, the, the glamour of it wears off. And I think that is what is happening, you know. So you think it's, it's enough, it's time for Mr. Rawlings to stop? Shouldn't he speak his mind as he well? Speak his mind, but there are, uh, if, you are, if you belong to a party, there, are, there, there is, the party has a machinery for dealing with uh, grievances, and you should use the, the, the machinery. The chairman of, of, of the national, the NEC, we, we say, the National Executive Council, do you think that he should go through the processes if you also have issues with per elements within the party? He's not the chairman of the NEC. Mm -hmm. he's, he's the chairman of the Council of Elders. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and everybody within the party is subject to the rules of the party. Interesting. So we are still speaking to uh, Dr. Obed Yao Asamoah. I think we have to turn on to another interesting, should I say, character uh, within the NDC. Citizen Vigilante is what most people call him. Mr. Martin Amidu. He's also served in the capacity that you served, but you served longer than he did uh, as former Attorney General. Mr. Martin Amidu, I'm sure you've been reading articles from him. When you read articles from him, do you get surprised? What, what comes to mind? No, I'm not surprised. I have worked with him, and <coughs> I know that uh, he's an honest person. And uh, issues of corruption and the rest are things that uh, he would not uh, uh, tolerate. But you know, you can keep, you can do things in a way that sometimes then the, your, the point that you are making loses its shine. You see, because sometimes his criticisms take on the, the uh, again, the thing I was talking about, I mean, making one feel like you are holier than everybody else. Uh, you know, sometimes it looks like you are on um, a campaign of vengeance, uh, you know, or, or, or persecution, you know. Once you get that far, then it, you know, it, it begins to, to kind of uh, irritate people. You know everything that has happened. You know the history behind a lot of things that I'm sure we might not get time to talk about. Do you think Mr. Martin Amidu is a bitter man? Well, I don't know about some of the things that uh, uh, Valerie talked about that happened between him and Mills, because at that time I was not in the system. So uh, if those things did happen, of course he, could, might, he might be bitter. And he's expressing it in the things that he writes. You think so? I think that uh, he would he w would have been expressing his opinions in any case on the issues of corruption, uh, irrespective of what what happened between him and uh, and Mills. But as I say, because of the persistence and the and and and, and the degree of uh, criticism, I mean, you get the impression that he, he has a kind of a cause uh, to fight against certain elements. Mm. I, I'm sure you've heard about a petition that has been filed as a result. He's written a number of articles, including accusing the NDC of bringing in the EC chair, Madame Charlotte Ose, to rig the 2016 elections, amongst several others. A petition has been filed by two parliamentary candidates, former parliamentary candidates or failed parliamentary candidates of the NDC. They are asking that the disciplinary committee should take an action against him or maybe remove him from the party or expel him from the NDC. You think that would be the way to go? Well, I'm not aware of the, of the petition, but if any party member feels that somebody has uh, gone contrary to the rules of, uh, of, of the party, they're entitled to use the machinery of the party to, uh, to deal with that person. But you know, one will have to be fair because maybe Martin is not the only one who deserves <laughs> that kind of petition. 
Who else might deserve that kind of petty? Your guess, your guess is as good as mine. Is it Mr. Rawlings? Your guess is as good as mine. You think a petition should be filed against Mr. Rawlings as well? Your guess is as good as mine. What would be that guess, Mr. Rawlings? Your guess is as good as mine. So you think that the founder of the party, a petition should be filed against him as well as is being filed against Mr. Martin Ami? Is that there are others who probably have uh, also gone contrary to the rules of the party and people who want to um, invoke the procedures of discipline must do that uh, you know, equally in relation to those other people.